What's up everybody, this is Dredd from 4UMF.com, reporting right now live with Tony Newman. Tony Newman, how you doing? I'm good, thank you for having me on the show, sir. There's a big book that's going around and you happen to be the author of it, um, I Rise. Yes, I Rise, The Transformation of Tony Newman. Yes. Would you like to elaborate on it for the people? I got a call from you saying you wanted the truth and there was a lot of mistruths that's been spread over the internet. My book, I Rise, The Transformation of Tony Newman, talks about a 25-year journey of a Jacksonville, North Carolina, Southern boy, college graduate, to now a pre-op African-American transgender in America. Talks about how I got from point A to point B, which took me approximately 25 years. I out no one in my book. I list not one celebrity name in my book at all. So I haven't outed uh, anyone in my book, nor have I named anyone in my book that's on sale on Amazon. Talks about outing. There seems to be a contract that you go, went ahead and you've emailed me, and it seems to be circulating around on the internet with a few celebrities, one rapper included LL Cool J. Would you go ahead and elaborate on that? Jackie Jasper of Hollywood Street King website, a hip hop urban guru. Um, that's what he says on his website. So I'm calling what he describes himself as. I, I got a call the other day, like, who made him a guru? Where his website says Hollywood, I mean, Hollywood Urban Guru got a copy of the contract which states Tony Newman as a prostitute had sex with LL Cool J on page one, which you have there on your board to see and ask for three weeks of exclus exclusivity under that, as you see there. So, yes, I did get polygraphed by the National Enquirer, and they call it getting vetted to see if this story is of newsworthiness. I got vetted by the polygrapher uh, Joseph Paglioli, an ex-Secret Service guy who worked for President Kennedy and an author himself. And on that same day, I got a contract uh, from the Enquirer telling me a week later my story was going to be on the Enquirer webpage and in their newspaper uh, outing on a one-time encounter with LL Cool J uh, with some other information I'm not sure, but with my story, my picture, which I submitted to them over that week, my background, my degree, they had looked into it and got all the information, what hormones I took to grow my tits, how did I get silicone injections, where did I get silicone, we'd had a full, thorough, back and forth for a week until I found out that Monday we were talking to LL Cool J and we're putting your story on hold. Five days later, we worked something out. Uh, they released me from my contract, and uh, here we are today. Two months later, this guy, Jackie Jasper, gets a copy. says, who gives contracts from a million-dollar corporation? They're based out of Florida. This is what they do, break stories and vet people and get the information. They got it from you but didn't run with it. I said, uh, something happened. And he ran with that story, LL must have paid the National Enquirer off. I'm going to look into it. He did, and he ran the story, and there it is. From that point, people start saying, her book was out, oh, out, LL, Eddie Murphy, another rapper, the, the president of Def Jam. My book has no names in it, has never had names. It does say it's rappers, politicians, uh, lieutenant governors. It is a general statement of who me and my transgender prostitute friend saw in New York on 14th Street back in the day on Tranny Row when those cars were circling the block by the hundreds. There were also some others that um, recently have been mentioned, um, one of them being the DJ that helped discover um, Notorious B.I.G. That is correct. I got a call from a reporter in New York that she had spoke to other transgenders after she looked up his police report of getting arrested in April, found two other police reports of him getting or sex from transvestite, transgender type people. Most of them have said, I've sucked his dick on one account or another or know somebody. If they hadn't, they knew. I, only, I, I know people, and I've done it on many occasions myself, perform oral sex only. I've never known him to change his M.O. He's consistent, and he would reward you financially a little bit more than the 40 to $50 I was requesting if he was satisfied and happy with my performance, and uh, he was verbal about it. That was that. Eddie Murphy, I was asked, have I had sex with Eddie Murphy? I have never, let me repeat, had sex or intercourse with Eddie Murphy, but I am aware of many of my transgender sisters on the tranny row who did, and some of them on more than one occasion. I was never asked to date Eddie Murphy, as we called it. He was never a client of mine, and I've never been with him sexually. 
So that's the story on that. That's it. If you wanted to, even though you were associated with those three names, you can mention tons of others. I had it originally over 35 names in my book. My editor from Boston U, a professor, began to edit it. So I like what you're doing here, but you're entering some very dangerous ground. Some you have proved, some you've heard. It's just too, it's too, it's too tedious. Why don't we pull the names out and just say a rapper? He was a politician. He was in the record business. He worked as a policeman. Let's not name names. You can't be held for naming general, but you can be held in a book for naming people. I could be taken to court to say, this is not true, and I need proof. The only thing I have is proof that I speak on. Uh, the other two were my opinion and my encounter. LLI was polygraphed on, on specific questions. Not once. I've also taken another polygraph with another magazine. They asked the same questions that Sarah quoted from the Inquirer sent to say, these are the questions we're going to ask you on the 14th of February. We'll need you to answer truthfully to these before we will run your story. We can't run it based on your word. We need you to come down. I went down and polygraphed, stayed there a couple of hours. When I left, I had a contract. My publicist was informed, and we said, here is a story coming out in a week. We're going to be in the National Enquirer. That did not happen. Out of the nine questions that was asked, mention just four or five for the people. Uh, did LL Cool J know you were a transvestite when he picked you up? You were a transgender prostitute in the late 90s in New York City. Uh, LL Cool J paid you for sex as a transgender. Have you talked to LL Cool J since that encounter? LL Cool J was a one-time encounter only. Those were the questions. There were some more, but they were down that general line. Some were repetitive, reworded, change it backwards. LL, you know LL. LL know you. That the wording is different to go back and forth. But the, the, the basis of the, tr the test, you, you had sex with him one time. I've only said one time. Got paid for it. Never had it again. This is what I did at the Inquirer. This is what I did a couple of a week ago with someone else who saw the email that Jackie Jasper had and asked me the same general questions and then asked me, uh, Mr. C, you know him to love or sex from transgender. That was thrown in there. You are aware that Eddie Murphy likes transgender as well. Not you. Yes. You never had sex with him. No. And that was added to there so they can include all three for their legal purposes because they want to run the story and they're going to say, we've asked her and polygraphed her. So we'll all go to court on it. She passed the polygraph and we believe her. We saw the contract from the inquirer. They must have believed her. So we're going to run with it. So that keeps the, the people have to do the polygraph without the text as the Tiger Woods people had and the pictures and other concrete stuff. They bring you in for a polygraph to say, is this the truth? And if you don't pass, I'm assuming they don't run the story or they don't give you a contract. Being that the book wasn't about outing anybody, what is the book really about? 